Good afternoon. Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence today on a difficult day. But we thank you, God, that in our journey of life, you are not just with us in the good times but you are with us in the tough times and so we thank you for your presence with us today i just pray that our moments together will be meaningful that even as we reflect on hugh's life we would also find time to reflect on our own life I pray that you will give guidance, Father, and give direction to everything that we do today as we commit ourselves into your hand and we commit this time into your hand as well. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And on behalf of our family, we want to say to you that we appreciate your presence this evening. There are times when words are not enough to console, but your presence means a lot. And so we thank you today in the midst of all that's happening in our world with the pandemic, that you are here to give support this evening. We want to begin by singing the hymn Precious Lord, oh my Lord, take my hand, my hand. Like lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, take my hand, 
first scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to St. John and chapter 14, verse 1 to verse 6. And this will be read by Janelle Small. Right. Good afternoon. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may, also, may be also. And whither I go ye know, and, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you, Janelle, for those words of assurance from the Gospel according to St. John. You may be seated. And at this time, we're going to have tributes. First of all, steel pan by Anthony Small, and then a tribute by Jeffrey Small. Heaven. 
Get all the beans in right on this earth with his family and turn of his will and was love. Despite the pain he had, he still finds time to discuss issues with us from time to time. You sadly passed away at 68. Farewell, my schoolmate. Farewell, my district buddy. Farewell, my adult mate. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Jeffrey, for your kind words as you reminisce about your friend. Let's all stand again as we sing the hymn, Thy Way Not Mine, O Lord. And immediately after that hymn, we are going to have our second Bible reading, which will be read by Rashida Lopez, and this will be taken from the book of Thessalonians chapter 4, from, verses, from verse 13 to verse 18. Thy way not mine, O Lord, however dark it be, lead me by thine own hand, choose out the path for me, smooth let it be, O it will be still the best, winding or straight it leads, right onward to thy rest. I dare not choose my lot, I would not if I might choose the for me, my God, so shall I walk aright. The kingdom that I see is thine, so let the way that leads to it be thine. Else I must surely stray. Take thou my cup and it with joy or sorrow fill, as best to thee may seem. Choose thou my good and ill. Choose thou for me, my friends, my sickness or my help. Choose thou my kids for me, my poverty or wealth. Not mind, not mind the choice. In things or great or small, be thou my guide, my strength, my wisdom, and my all. Second scripture reading. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive, 
and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you, Rashida. And Verna Hines will come at this time and read for us the eulogy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And let me say there will be some repetition, repetition, but I'll try to do this eulogy to the best of my ability. Re reading this eulogy today is probably one of the most difficult things I have ever done in my life. But it is very important for me to say a few words on the behalf of the family about my brother-in-law, Hugh. Hugh Small was the first child born to Kenray and Zelmyris Canterbury. 68 years ago in South District, St. George. He came to Mile and a Quarter, St. Peter, as a baby. But when he was only eight years old, both of his parents emigrated to the United Kingdom, leaving him and his four siblings, Margarita, Anthony, Mondel, and Merlin, behind. They grew up in a close, knit, loving, and happy family with their paternal aunt, who they affectionately called Aunt Boys, and her husband, James. They were also cared for by their paternal grandparents, Cyril and Beryl Scanterbury, who they lovingly called Magran and Ta. Hugh remained very close to his siblings and kept in contact with his two youngest siblings, Grafton and Delbra, who were born in the United Kingdom. Fishing was a great love of his, and he spent many wonderful years at sea fishing with his brother Tony. He had a special bond with his sister Mondel, and on many occasions, you would hear them talking about church, politics, life, and their mutual love for planting desert roses and food crops. During his illness, she was always there for him, encouraging him to be strong. McGrown was the matriarch of the family, and made sure that the children went to both church and Sunday school at what was called the Breakaway Church. This Christian upbringing ensured that paramount importance was placed on values like honesty, kindness, decency, reliability, honor, dignity, respect, humility, commitment, just to name a few. These are all the qualities that Hugh not only held in high esteem, but practiced daily during his time on this earth. As a young man, he worshiped at the Manor Pentecostal Church, which was led by Pastor Springer and Beckles. He was a member of the church band and was an awesome drummer. Hugh continued his Christian journey at the Bethany Baptist Church in Mile and a Quarter, where he worshiped for more than a decade and was an outstanding deacon. There he was considered a prayer warrior, and you could call on him any time to pray, short notice or not. When he opened his mouth to pray, everyone was touched, and even amazed because you could hear not his words, but the eloquent and precise words that God put into his heart and his mouth. After leaving Courage and Paris School, Hugh found employment as a clerical officer in the Barbados Postal Service, where he remained for over 40 years and rose to the position of postmaster. He was attached to most of the post offices in Barbados, from as far as the airport, right to Spikestown and St. Lucie. He had a very good work ethic and was always courteous and punctual. In fact, at his passing, a comment was made that he was the best postmaster that the postal service ever had. Because of Hugh's personality, he quickly gained many friends. The pensioners at St. Lucie's Post Office remember his goodness and his kind-heartedness. On pension days, when they arrived very early to get into long lines to get their pension checks changed, Hugh, who was always early, 
would open the post office before 8 o'clock or 8.15 the opening hour and allow the pensioners to come in and cash their checks. Hugh was a straightforward man who demanded very little from those around him, but who expected the best from his children, Dave, Janelle, and Nicole, and his beautiful granddaughters, Belisa, Rashada, and Danielle. He loved them dearly and was happy when they achieved success. Nicole, who cannot be here with us today, is blessed to have had such a wonderful father and will always remember the opportunity she got in recent times to communicate with him regularly. She and his nephew, Dwayne, remember the many fishing trips he took them on whenever they visited Barbados. Hugh's finest quality was being a family man. He worked hard to provide for his family, guide and protect them. For over 47 years, the love of his life burned was at his side. They did most things together, including traveling to Disney World and cruising. She always made sure that when he stepped out of the house, he was immaculately dressed. His kindness extended to his mother-in-law, Vita, who loved him dearly, and he in turn loved her and would do anything for her. Hugh had a green thumb, and from his teenage years, he recognized that he could make anything grow. Although he was gainfully employed, nothing could keep him from his gardening. He planted a wide variety of crops and grew the best lettuce available in the market. Although illness rendered him unable to continue going to church, Hugh put his life and problems in God's hands and God put peace in his heart. In fact, the Monday before he died, he was seen at the hospital joyfully clapping his hands and saying, the more he struggled with his health, the stronger his faith grew in God. He was good to the Lord and God never left his side. And this made him able to bear his illness with dignity. During his illness, Hugh made few demands and through it all, his loving wife stood by his side. She did it. She did all she could to make him comfortable. His children, Dave and Janelle, were always there to support him. Janelle made the weekly and sometimes twice weekly trips to the hospital with him. Tony could be called on at any time for assistance. Thanks to his nephew, Kevin, who assisted him in everywhere possible, and was there whenever he was called, whether day or night. Today, it is difficult for his family to imagine him not being around, and I'm not sure how they will cope, but the memory of a good and loving husband, dad, granddad, brother, and uncle will be forever etched in their hearts. The family wants to say thanks to all those who were there for Hugh during his illness, to you that are here or online sharing and their grief, his cousin, Pastor Lenox Boyce, all those who call to express sympathy, sick yards or reads. Thanks also goes to Don and the Oncology Department at the QEH. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Verna. Let's stand again as we sing the hymn, The Day Thou Give Us, Lord, is in.
bids us rest is waking our breath beneath the western sky and all by our fresh lips Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to share in your word. Thank you because your word speaks to us in every season of life. And so today we believe that you will speak to our hearts and you will give to us from your word exactly what we need. Just make our hearts, Father, like good ground that we may be able to receive your word. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to say this evening that I grew up as a junior to Hugh and all of his siblings. Our fathers were brothers. And so we had the common figure in Aunt Boyce who had a hand in raising all of us. I must confess that I had a little bit of a fear for Hugh when I was a little boy. And it stemmed from a story that my father told me of when Hugh first went to Court and Parry. And he had the name Big Pa. And he said to me that Hugh was very gifted, very talented, very bright. But he went through a little phase when he started giving trouble at school. And he said that he was given the responsibility of giving him a set of lashes. And according to him, I don't know if the story is true or not, but according to him, that set of lashes that he gave him set him straight and that many of the things that he accomplished in his very successful life, he attributed to those lashes. Now, what my father also said to me was that he had instructed Hugh that I got to the stage that, that said Courage and Parry School where I started giving trouble, that he was responsible for giving me the same set of lashes that he had given to him. And so I had this quiet fear, knowing myself and knowing the little trouble that I also gave, that someday it would catch up with me and I would get that set of lashes as well. It never caught up with me, thank God. But I always saw Hugh as a very sophisticated person. You, you, you looked at him and you saw success on him. He knew who he was. He was very confident about his own abilities and about his own self-identity. And so today I am honored to be asked to conduct a service on behalf of my cousin and to share a word from the Lord with you. And I want today to just lift for a few minutes one verse from the 90th division of the book of Psalms, which reads, 
in verse 12, it says, Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Another version of this text says, Teach us to understand that our days are numbered so that we can be wise in the way we approach life. Teach us to understand that our days are numbered so that we can be wise in the way we approach life. This verse speaks of the fact that life is temporary. That life is but a season, it is fleeting. It highlights the fact that we are not here forever. James, in chapter 4 of his book, puts it this way. He says, whereas you know not what you shall be on the morrow, for what is life? James says, it is even a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it vanishes away. The psalmist in verse 6 of this text says, In the morning it springs up new, but in the evening it is cut down and withereth. Life is a season, and all seasons come to an end. We can take all the vitamins we want. We can exercise as much as we like. We can eat well and get adequate rest. And while this may give us a better quality of life, while this may even prolong life in some circumstances, life is still a season. And sooner or later, a day like today will come for all of us. Going to the school just over here, I learned a lot of hymns. Two of my teachers are here as well. well. One of the hymns that always stuck with me is a hymn that says, Lord, I would own thy tender care and all thy love to me. But there is a part of that hymn that says, I cannot draw another breath unless thou givest me power. Acknowledging the fact that life, in essence, is really not in our hands that our days are really numbered by God and that it is by his grace that we have breath. And so everyone in the world, regardless of how old they become, would have once been a baby in arms and as time began to tick for them, seconds turned to minutes and minutes to hours and hours to days and to weeks and to years. And during the course of life, we realize that one day we come to this juncture when we pass from time into eternity. Why is it important that we recognize that our days are numbered? The psalmist says it is important because when we understand that our days are numbered, it should help us to apply our hearts unto wisdom, that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. But what is the wisdom that we need to apply our hearts to? We, we acknowledge that, yes, one day our lives too will come to an end. Our days are indeed numbered according to God's word. But the psalmist is here saying, Acknowledge, appreciate that your days are numbered so that you might apply your hearts unto wisdom. And even as we think of the wisdom that we should apply our hearts to, I want to use the words of Jesus. And Jesus highlights this as the greatest commandment. If we think of the greatest commandment, we are thinking of the highest ideal that we can strive for in life. And if it's the greatest commandment, if it's the highest ideal that we can strive for in life, it 
means that to obey this must be to apply our hearts unto wisdom. If we're going to maximize our lives with the days that we have, it means that this must then become something that is important for us. And here is what Jesus said. He said, if you're going to apply your heart to wisdom, do this. Love the Lord and love people. This is how Jesus sums it up. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, this is the greatest commandment of all of them. This is the one that you should pay greatest attention to. And I want to suggest that when we love God with all of our heart, we don't live carelessly. And when we love people like we love ourselves, we don't live selfishly. People who live carelessly look back with many regrets about their life. Wishing many times that they could return to earth and live their lives all over again. They spend many of their days weeping over missed opportunities and frustrated over wasted years and sad about the many mistakes they made along the way. And so many times we hear words like, I wish I had. I'm sorry that I didn't. And I want to challenge us today to apply our hearts to wisdom. So because our days are numbered, we only have so many minutes with our children to form and shape them before they leave our homes. We only have so many minutes with our parents before we move out or before they go away. We only have so many minutes with our brothers and sisters, with our cousins, with our nieces and our nephews and our grandparents. And if we are fortunate enough with our great-grandparents, we only have limited time with each other. We have limited time because our days are numbered. And when we understand that time for all of us is limited, it should push us to make the most of every opportunity. I'm not sure if, like me, you grew up in a home where there was a cabinet in the home that had special glasses and special plates that would only come out when special people come to the house. And when they were gone, they were washed, dried, put back in the cabinet, until there was another special occasion. I want to say to us today, life is a special occasion. Life is a special occasion. Enjoy everything that you have with everything that you have because our days are numbered. Irma Bombeck, after she came to a place where she realized that her life was at an end. She said these words. She said, if I could live my life over, I would have talked less and listened more. She said, I would have invited friends over to dinner even if the carpet was stained and the sofa was faded. I would have eaten popcorn in the good living room and worried less about the dirt when someone wanted to light a fire in the fireplace. I would have taken time to listen to my grandfather ramble about his youth. I would never have insisted that the car windows be rolled up on a summer day because my hair had just been done. I would have burned the pink candle that was cocked like a rose before it melted in the storeroom. I would have cried on the lawn with my children and not worried about the grass stains. I would have enjoyed more time with my husband rather than being caught up with all the other responsibilities that consumed my time. 
I would have gone to bed when I was sick. Instead of pretending the herb would go into a holding pattern if I weren't there for a day. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't show soil, or was guaranteed to last a lifetime. Instead of wishing away nine months of pregnancy, I would have cherished every moment and realized the wonderment growing inside me and that this was the only chance in life to assist God with a miracle. When my kids kissed me, I would never have said to them, later, not now, go and have a, a shower. There would have been more I love yous, more I'm sorries. But most of all, she said, if I was given another shot at life, I would seize every moment. My friends, time is a commodity that cannot be stored. It must be used now. Otherwise, it is gone forever. And today, our text calls us to understand that our days are numbered, that everything around us is time bound, and it will all come to an end someday. And God will hold us accountable for those days that he has numbered. And so the advice that I want to leave with us today is that we do exactly what the psalmist says, apply our hearts unto wisdom. Live wisely. Because the Bible tells us that there is a reward for those who live wisely. There is a reward for those who obey the greatest commandment, who love the Lord with all their hearts and their mind and their soul and their strength. And they love their neighbor as they love themselves. So Paul, as he got near to the ending, he said to his um, mentor, Timothy, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that last day, and not to me only but unto all them that love his appearing. We too can hear the words of the master when he looks at the days that he's given to us, numbered as they are. When he looks at us and examines what we've done with those days, we can hear the words, well done good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of thy Lord. Our days are numbered. Let us live wisely. Stand with me, please. We thank you for being with us, being present with us in the midst of our tears and our cries and the emotions that we feel today. And today, yes, Lord, we are grieving, but we are not grieving like persons who do not have a hope. Father, even though we feel hurt in ourselves, we rejoice because we know that the faithful servant that he was, he too will hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of thy Lord. I pray today for strength and for courage and for hope and for assurance for our family. As we battle through these waters, lift our heads up. Remind us who you are, that you are still our shepherd, that you are still a shield about us and our glory and the lifter of our heads, that you are still our refuge and our strength, 
and a very present help in the time of trouble. I pray that those of us that are alive and that remain, in light of your word today, I pray that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom as we acknowledge that our days too are numbered. You may be seated. much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world and unto himself the soul of our deceased brother we therefore commit his body to the ground earth to earth ashes to ashes dust to dust I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the lord from henceforth save the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them god be with you till we meet again by his counsel's guide uphold you with his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again. Let's sing that hymn together. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel guide uphold you. With the sheep securely fold you, God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet. Till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protect and hide you. Daily manners will provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils they confound you, 
put his arms unfailing round you. God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's banner floating o'er you. Smite the threatening wave before you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you till we meet again. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. We are going to sing to him, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
praising my Savior all the day long. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, it is well. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, It's called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder 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 i'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till set in sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called Yonder I'll be there When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We will sing and shout the victory Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be old. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets.
gates of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay when we all get to heaven of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon his beauty we'll behold soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory Blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, 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 mine. Oh, what a portent! A portent of glory divine. All days I'm an heir to salvation. Yes, I am. I've been purchased by God, so glad I have. I'm born of His Spirit, His Spirit, oh Lord. I'm just washing His blood. This is my story. Perfect submission Oh, perfect delight That's what it is in my life Visions of rapture Suits my case and whisper the love.
over my soul As long as I'm under his control It is alright It is alright, alright It is alright, alright As long as I have my Lord beside me It is alright As long as I have his hands to hold As long as he watches over my soul As long as I'm under his control Let us pray. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.